have any Linux questions at this point? Uh, we're good with Apache. And then we just finished talking about MySQL. Now, obviously, I just give you a quick intro to MySQL. This is by no means to be complete. <coughs> and I want to show you how to build enough of a database to make a web page work. Okay, so any questions about MySQL? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the difference between the command language for MySQL and the command language for, let's say, for a standard programming language like BASIC? What's the, how, compare them just high level. Well, they're just... Just high level. I don't yeah. need to know details. Yeah, well... The thing I would say is that the basic programming language is designed for you to put together multiple separate commands that will then all be treated as a program. And that would be the main difference, is that SQL is really designed to be run one line at a time. So the idea with SQL is you're either going to you know, add data, or extract data, or update data, or delete data. Well, actually it does have some conditions, but they don't work the way they do in basic. So the deal with basic is that you have <coughs> what I would call blocks of code. Yeah. And then you can apply your ifs to blocks of code. Whereas SQL is really designed to do, they refer to them as transactions, that you do one transaction at a time. Now you could say do this transaction if certain conditions are met. So it does have an if, but it's used differently than how it's used in basic. Oh, yeah. So basic is designed as a program language. Well, the name says it all. It's a query language. It's not a programming language. So, you know, the idea is that, yeah, you'd shoot at a query, and that query would be to either select something to determine results, or to update something, or to delete something. Yes? Um, I would make this available to members of the group who might be interested. I think I have at least one copy of C.J. Dates' uh, uh, book on database structures. Um, if someone wants it, let me know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a real good uh, reference. I remember trying to memorize all that stuff back in uh, the 80s, I think it was, you know. Very good concepts that still hold, I think. Yeah. That's another thing that I really kind of bypassed on this because my focus is really on how to make a web page work. But when you're working with any database, it's important that you plan ahead and that you try to do what they call standardizing, which basically means <coughs> that you don't ever want to type in the same thing twice. So the idea of standardizing is that if I keep track of several students and some go to Washtenaw Community College and some go to University of Michigan, it would not make sense for me to have, to type in Washtenaw Community College five times for each of the five students. What would make sense would be for me to make a table named colleges and have one college the Washington Community College. And then what I would do is for each student, I would decide that they either go to college one or college two. And the advantage of that, for one, is that it'll take up less room in the database because I'll only type out Washington Community College once. But there are hundreds of copies of the pointer, but that's much smaller. Yes. 
Absolutely. And then the other thing is there's less chance of a typo. Because if there's a typo in how I spell Washtenaw Community College, it's going to be obvious the first time I see it and I can fix it. Fix it, but fix it in the table one says fix it everywhere. Absolutely. Yes. So if my, if my list of students grows and I've got 100 students and only two of them are mistyped, well, yeah, that could cause problems. So you get the idea. That, that's the idea of standardizing. You just want to plan your data and plan it so that you only have to, uh, so that any bit of information is only stored once. Yes? And not only standardized, but normalized. You don't want, you know, a record that has 10 different things in it that are not related. You want, you want to, I don't know how to explain it, it's been a long time, but. Um, so things that are yes. related should be related yeah, and related. things that are not or should not, right? <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't yeah. have, let's say you have a, a. College and the height. So the person's height has nothing to do with what college they go to. Right. You don't want to store those in the same <coughs> record, right? Right. Yes. Right, and I, uh, to reemphasize your concept on, on, you know, the college names, so, like, if a college changes its name, like Lawrence Technological University, which they or, do, or Henry Ford, which they do, or Henry Ford College, right? Henry two Ford colleges. Community College, now Henry Ford College. Yes. So we've had two colleges in the area that has done that over the past several years. So yes, so you'd only change it in one record rather than going through and having to change it everywhere. This tells me that yes, PHP is configured right and Apache is configured right to use PHP. But it tells you all kinds of stuff that normally you don't need to dig into. Okay, so that one command created all this information. Or, yes. Okay. Yeah. So 
that's just a file. And you can reload that file at any time. And it's got all kinds of things that may or may not be interesting to you. <laughs> so there it is. Again, this is just a way to double check that you have PHP installed correctly. And is Apache configured correctly. And when we see that page, we know the answer to you. Both is yes. So that means now we're ready to start building pages. Cool. This. I don't want to type 15 times for all 15 places where I make a connection to the database. So basically, I just store it. It kind of goes back to that idea of, hey, when you have information you need multiple places, just put it in one place and then refer to that place. So <coughs> that's what we're doing with PHP in this case. So basically, we're going to talk here. Hey, DB server is the local host. The user is my DB.
part is what creates this section inside this little box that lets you submit the information. And then basically, based on that, this will either return the words no matches or at the bottom, it's going to print out all the data that's from the database. Now the idea is we only have three things right now, so yeah, let's see them all. But if we wanted to, we could just see the ones that have the word two. There it is. So the idea is you could use this file. Displaying and for searching within uh, the, the fields. So there's nothing. Oh, yeah, we want to find all the ones in the name. You'll notice I've got it set for a case and says. So uh, where are where are this uh, commands? Where are these located? Do you have uh, a file like we had the other one? Yes, they're all in a file. And right now we've got a file by the name of display.php. That's the one that displays what we've got. And we've got another one called options.php, which is a file that is included by display. Let's do something different. Let's figure out how to add something. And to do that, we'll create a new file called the add submit stuff, it's going to be submitted back to the same page, so this one page will both ask you for information and process the information. And you can tell that because the form action is dollar self, and we said dollar self would be a whatever page this is. And what we're going to do is we're going to input name and input notes. And then what will happen is we'll double check, hey, if this thing was submitted, then I know they need to do something. But if it wasn't submitted, I don't have to do anything. And then 
then, of course, if it's submitted, what it does is it'll run this SQL query. So you can see, like, all the bits and pieces come together in this file where you have to do the, the SQL and then the connection to, to SQL. So let's take a look at this guy and see how it works. Pop over here to add that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. So, hey, did I actually add those? You might wonder. Well, let's go back to our display and see. Oh, yeah, we just added a bunch of things. Yeah, but you're not clicking the submit query. Oh, he's just hitting the enter key. Oh, up here? The, no, the, on the previous thing when you were putting in gib and then zero, oh, yeah, you hit okay. enter, but we didn't show on here. Yeah. It's, you didn't slide the mouse over and click on the button. You just hit enter. Yes. And so we couldn't see that. Yes, that's exactly what that was. And what you will notice is it puts these in alphabetical order. So there they are. Um, and then, you know, if we wanted to, we could find all the ones with the name Gib. select the record to edit or delete. It tells you that in the description. And then what I'll do is present you with some forms. Thank you. 
Yes. This looks like a good starting point, right? Yes. It has all the basic stuff though. So this brings up a good question about, you know, can we set things up with like uh, echoing uh, diagnostic information and things like that? So if you yes. want to enter a little command and say, I've gotten this far and that type of thing, it would. <coughs> I imagine maybe you just copied the file wrong and missed, missed a parenthesis or something. Yeah, you might want to just recopy that file down. Yeah, you just missed it. So it's like we know that if you're working on record number six, and I was going to change it to Carl TM. We'll update. And it takes me back, and I can see that, yeah, it did do the update. And forgive. Very cool. The only thing that I think that's worth mentioning, you might say, well, 